Oh, that's better. Now you can see my cheap coffee cup. <laughs> Here's that. I think that's better. We don't need all that. Space at the top. At the top. Hi, everybody. Welcome to the Not House Podcast. Good morning. I'm Heather. And I'm Kathy. Or Mom. Mom. As I refer to her. So today is Tuesday, February 11th. It is. And it's been a while since we podcasted. This is podcast number 34. You know, I was watching, and can you imagine if we had to do it in another language? You know, like I spoke English and then you spoke French, like Spanish oh, yeah. Street does? Yeah. <laughs> I was like, how did they do that? <laughs> it would take me too long to process what you had said to be able to say anything in English. So, so, we have a lot to talk about today. Yeah, so let's let's try to get it all in without without going over an hour. Yeah, I know I like that we our recent podcasts have been shorter, and I think it's a good thing. It's it's good for editing. <laughs> well, I'm sure. So I'm sure. we have a lot of yarns to talk about. We have a lot of finished things to talk about. We have events to talk about. First of all, let's talk about Vogue. Okay, we had a really good time. Seems like forever ago already. It does. We didn't get sick. So that's no, great. we didn't get the flu. No. Now that may have been because Nana and Christina were handing, us <laughs> handing out this hand sanitizer. hand sanitizer every time anybody would hug you. Yeah. Um, but it was a great show. I would say that it was not as crowded on Saturday as I thought it would be. Well, remember there was like this possible snow event that was going to happen that didn't true. happen like we haven't even had a winter really. Well, it did snow there a little bit. It did, but... But not much. But true. And Friday night was busy, but it was their 10th anniversary. Yeah. And Sunday wasn't even... But there was a lot of yarn. It was good to see all the people. That's kind of what we go for. Right. Is to see all the people. And there people. were some new people. There were some new people. We met some new people. Yeah. And we're having a trunk show, not this weekend, but the next weekend, which yes. is what, Mom, the 22nd and 23rd? I believe that's correct. And um, that is... Terry and her husband from At Haynes House. Right. And they were, they were there at the show yes they were they were outside on um, the the main entrance and it was, it was good to see them and there it were was. several smaller uh, maybe like new business new yarn dyers new um, I craft think, people I think Vogue made that area on purpose for new um, hand dyers and designers and crafters yeah which was nice Dang it. what my earrings. I had these. I gotten these earrings. Remember oh, my earrings yeah. I got from Vogue? Yeah, yeah. You'll have to wear them next time. I'll have time. to wear them next time uh, if I can find them. Okay. So, so again, so I guess that's the lead in to, to Terry and her husband coming um, next weekend. That's right. He does bags. Are they bringing bags too? I think so. Okay. I think so. I don't remember seeing any of the bags at Vogue. Maybe he didn't bring them to they, Vogue. They may not have had room because they did have a small area. So it'll be their first trunk show. So we're really glad and honored that they're going to have their first trunk show here at the Knot House. Yeah, we're excited yeah. about that. So there'll be goodies and who knows what all else. Sorry, we had to, we're back. We're back. Mom had to take a phone call. So we talked about the trunk show coming up. We did. Um, I want to say that we are over 4,000 subscribers now. We are. And that seems amazing. Um, we will have a giveaway and we will talk about that in a few minutes. So why don't we talk about a few things that people asked us about? Okay. So I don't know, a week or two ago when we were thinking about doing the podcast and then we got delayed and mom has her pattern and we were waiting for that to be ready. So Anyway, I asked what people wanted to um, wanted us to talk about on the podcast, and we got a couple of, of interesting topics. Um, one was they want to see the you, you guys want to see a tour of the shop, so we're not going to do that this time, but we'll do that on a, a future Another podcast. Um, and one of the things that kind of struck me as something that would be a good topic to talk about, and you kind of take for granted, 
is um, mom often talks about alternating skeins when she's doing a project. She'll say, well, and I didn't alternate skeins or I should have alternated skeins or you should alternate skeins. And somebody asked, what does that really mean? Okay, so, and I'm gonna show one of my mistakes. <laughs> Alternate, Reluctantly, but I'm gonna do it because you know, we're all human. Alternating skeins can mean two things. It can mean that you use two balls of yarn during the whole project. Kind of like you were striping them, but they're the same color. So you do two rounds with one ball, two rounds with the other ball. And then you just carry that, that yarn up. Uh, up the, up so, the side. So or, if it's a sweater, you carry it up the side. If it's a, it, no matter what it is, you carry it. If it's in the round, you carry it at the beginning of the round. And when she says carry it, what she really means is that when you, when you, you just pull it up, you just, you, you don't just, cut it every time. You don't time. cut it, right? So when you you're twist, changing your ball, you twist it as it comes right, up. Right. You just twist it and then you start knitting with it. And it, it carries itself up if you don't mess with it. It does. And it's on the inside and you don't have to really right. worry about catching it. Now, most of the time, at the end of the skein, before you're starting your next skein, before you add the next skein. If you'll do an inch to an inch and a half of blending, let's call it blending. Um, Andrea, okay, wait a minute. So you're talking about if you're doing a solid color sweater. If you're doing a solid color right, I sweater. I just wanna make sure everybody. Well, even if you're not doing a solid color sweater, even if it's speckled, or it's variegated. Okay, I'm, so we're talking about if you're doing something, a sweater or something in one color, color way. Yes. One not necessarily way. a solid. It can be a speckle. Whatever, I mean. It needs to be consistent. And what you're, what you're trying to get is the consistency of whether it's a speckle or whether it's a solid. But I just wanted to confirm that you're not talking about doing color work. No. You're not talking about doing stripes. No. You're talking about using one yarn colorway. And the only reason I mentioned striped is you're dealing with two balls of yarn mm -hmm. as if you were striping, even though they're the same color. Right. So one is to do it all the way through the garment. Keep alternating every couple of rows. Right, that's one way. What I prefer to do is at the end of the ball, before you're getting ready to change to your new ball of yarn, to do an inch to two inches of alternating, having two balls going. And what that does is it gets so that you don't have a line saying, oh, that's where they change skeins of yarn. Let's see, I'm trying to see if you guys can see it in this one. In this lighting, it doesn't show up as much. It's right there. Is it right there? Yeah. It's right well, there. I have to wear it on a cloudy day. <laughs> it's right here. So see how you can tell. Because I did not alternate skeins, even though she told me to. I was lazy, did it, ended with one ended with one ball and just picked up and started with another one. And, and they're very close. Under some lighting, you can see the line, even though my colors are pretty good. No hand dyer is perfect. Um, but what that, if you do it for just an inch to an inch and a half, two inches, is it blends it. So yes, maybe one skein's a little lighter, one skein's a little darker, but if you blend it, there's not oh, a I line of demarcation. Oh, they started a new skein of yarn right there. Yeah, I can see it right here, from yeah. here to here. So I don't know what I'm gonna do with this garment, actually. I only have, um, I'm almost done with one sleeve. And I, I need to do the other sleeve. What is this one called, Mom? This is Campside um, Pullover. Pullover by Alicia Plummer. And I haven't decided if it's bad enough for me to over dye it, but then I have a color that I just necessarily can't repeat if somebody asks me, oh, I want, you know, that color, um, which is probably what I'm gonna do uh, versus wearing it. And if I were out 
in the sun. Um, it just wouldn't look as good as it could. So one other thing <clears throat> that I do is as I'm winding the skeins of yarn, and I usually go ahead and wind all but one, as I'm winding them, I pay attention so that I can see, well, this one's a little lighter, this one might be a little darker, and make sure that if I wanna go light to dark, mm -hmm. that I do that instead of having a light one in the middle. Right. That I, and if you pay attention while you're winding the yarn, you can see that. But some people have the, have the shop wind it for them or something, you know? Well, then you ask. Right. Because when I wind them, I usually will tell somebody, this one's a good bit lighter. And when I say a good bit lighter, I'm not talking about a lot, a lot lighter. lighter. But of the three or four skeins, that's the lightest one. And I personally like to go light to dark because I think it's more flattering. Mm -hmm. um, or if you are doing color work, the one that's maybe not exactly the same as the other ones, you use it in the color work. Well, you just intentionally place it where you want it to be. Right. It's, just, it's an intentional decision about where that one goes. Right. So. So. So that was one question. I thought it was a great question. Um, and let me see, what was the other questions? Some of the other questions were um, that people wanted to see smaller projects. We've got some of those today. So we've got some of those. Uh, should we talk about um, what our fabulous Carissa knit up? It's gorgeous. So I posted this on Instagram. And for those of you guys that are just starting to watch us or maybe don't follow us on Instagram, we are not house yarns on Instagram. So um, this is the hat and it's, you know, when, when Carissa brought it in, I said, oh, it looks so hard. And she goes, it's just color work. It's just color work. It's not hard, but it's so um, delicate looking and, and very intricate. It's just really, really pretty. Um, the name of the pattern is the uh, Amalin hat and cowl. Um, it's a Sari Norland pattern. Sari is one of the ones of Chris, of Carissa's favorites. Yeah, she always kind of test knits and she might have test knitted. I think this one this. was a test knit, yeah. So again, it's Sari Norland and that's S-A-R-I. You guys know I'll link it down in the show notes. And if you don't know how to find the show notes, when you're looking at us on YouTube, there's a little down button for you to push and it'll... See more. It pop, yeah, see more. It populates everything that we wrote about the podcast. Anyway, that's where the links are. Um, so, uh, Norland is N-O-R-D-L-U-N-D. -N -D. So, uh, again, it's the Emalin, which is E-M-M-A-L-I-N, hat and cowl. So, this is the cowl. Gorgeous. Goes nicely with mom's shawl that we're going to talk about in a minute. So, as you can see, the colors are reversed, right? The cowl has got, oh boy, we could talk about dominance and non-dominance. Mm -hmm. Right? Mm -hmm. So, which one of these is the dominant, Mom? The green. The green? Mm -hmm. Okay. And then on this one, the, the white. white is dominant. Mm -hmm. So, that was a test for me, and I think I knew it. Got it right. That's a whole nother topic that we've had a lot of discussion about. <laughs> um, if you've watched before, you know. So, so anyway, anyway, this is gorgeous. Um, this is Four skeins of yarn, Mom? It is. So this cowl is double. So I'm not sure exactly about the construction. Do you know about the construction, Mom? Oh, she knitted in a tube. Mm -hmm. She just knitted in a tube. I was thinking, is this double knit? Surely to goodness it's not double knit. Oh, wait, wait, I can't find where she joined it. I can. So it's, just, it's knit in it's, a tube. It's knit yeah. in a tube this so way. So it's double thickness. It's super soft. So it's not the narrow way. It's the wide way. Okay. Um, and she used Ulan fingering. This is milk and pear. pear. And we have milk, but we no longer have pear. We've sold out of pear, but we have other greens that we would have be, two other greens that are very close. That would be a good substitution for it. It just feels so good the way it's, it's double. So anyway, so that's that. Very pretty. 
Even if you don't like green, it's really pretty. It is. It's very pretty. Because, you know, not everybody likes green. I know. So that's one thing. Do you want to talk about your cowl that you've got on, Mom? You mean the shawl? I mean the shawl. Yeah. This is Destination Unknown by Cheryl Faust. It's a big triangle. It is a deep. I was going to tell you that you're not supposed to have the point in the front, you know? Well, Casapinka would say I wasn't supposed to have the point in the front. But maybe that one is more intentional because the triangle is so deep. It is very deep. And not as long. The points aren't as long. Right. Um, Carissa did this one as well. And she used Julie Oselin's Journey, which is a new Rambouillet and Targi that we've gotten that I've got to reorder again. Um, everybody just loves it. Mm -hmm. Along with Spin Cycle, Tangled Up in Blue, Dyed in the Wool. Wow, that Tangled Up in Blue looks different than another Tangled Up in Blue. Tangled Up in Blue is always one of my favorites of theirs. Yes, it has more green in it. Mm -hmm. I think we did that on purpose. It's pretty. It it's is. very striking. It is. You could do all different kinds of color combos, and you've seen those. You've seen the whites and the reds. And, and the, the brown and, and the, the yeah. yeah. Black and red. Because they've got the, what is it, devilish grin? Yes. That's the pretty, pretty red. red. Mm -hmm. um, also, I was just thinking about this. Uh, we did not thank Dinah and Pam from... The knitting place. Oh, yes, we need to do that. So at, which made me think that we still have these little hat kits. Um, we still have a few of them. And so for Vogue, um, Mom and I were uh, in their booth, uh, I think it was Saturday for a little while, uh -huh. Saturday afternoon for a little while. And the knitting place has the best spot, or one of the best spots um, at Vogue because they're right next to the stage. It's a good thing and a bad thing about being next to the stage, but you got to look at it glass half full and say it's a good thing about <laughs> next to the stage because there's a lot of people there um but we need to you know thank Dinah and Pam and being such great hostesses and letting us um hang out in their booth for a little while and um showcasing the Knot House yarns and we had Alicia Plummer's um airy hat and I've shown the hat before this is one of the kits this is the blue and pink so the blue is the the base hat and then she later designed it in reverse color. The first time she knit it, she did it in the uh, Blue Eyes of Steel, which is the green that you see in the picture here. And then she reversed it. And those were all of the pictures that she showed on Instagram. So anyway, I just wanted to mention that we have the kits available still. Along with the patterns. Along with the patterns, yep. And what are these, Mom? 52? 52. 52, and that includes the, um, the little minis. So anyway, that's a, that's a good small small thing to do. Um, and again, wanted to thank Dinah uh, for, for having us at, at um, Vogue Live. So, so that was another one. And then I am working on a one skein project that it's kind of funny. I thought I might get it done before the podcast, before we podcasted. And I kept knitting and I kept knitting last night and look how much yarn I have left. <laughs> For one skein, that shows you how much more I have to go. <laughs> and you tell me. Don't I'm you think a, it's funny, though? Well, I think it's funny because you tell me I'm the slowest knitter on the planet. <sighs> well, I don't start to knit until about 8.30 or 9 o'clock when I sit down. And then I go until I can't hold my eyes open. So I am knitting um, Kohi Locatelli's Storm shawl, which she did. I don't want to say it was she designed this late. Last year, um, every once in a while, she'll do a one skein shawl because, you know, some of her things are so, so big. Uh, so this was one, and it's, again, it's called Storm. And I'll say that I like doing this because... It changes up. It changes up. It changes up. Now, I had some, some trouble with the drop stitches. You see these drop stitches right here. You see those? It's going to be very um, summery. open and summery. <clears throat> which and is probably going to be here any day because we don't have a winter. And what color are you doing that in? This is Pink Flamingo. And, um, diamond it, Sock. Yeah, Diamond Sock in my yarn. But um, 
it the thing about the pattern is there's not a whole bunch of do this 14 times. I don't like that about a pattern. I don't like it when it says repeat rows one through four 14 times. <laughs> Hey. So anyway, so I'm almost done with the um, the crest, the second part of the crescent, and hopefully I'll show this to you next time on our, our podcast. But this is another. This like, again, it's just a one skein fingering weight project, and there's not really anything tricky about it. Uh, the drop stitches are a little tricky, but you figure it out, right? You know, and it'll make a really nice summer yeah shawl or spring. Mm -hmm. So so that's one thing. Um, and I real quick, am just going to show, wait a minute, hang on, hold tight. Oh, let me, I was thinking about you this morning. Mom's in demand yeah, today. To see. All right. Today is the day of interruptions. Sorry. <laughs> um, I wanted to talk just a minute and I can just, I'm just showing a sneak peek. So this doesn't fall under our category of small projects. No, it doesn't, but it's what I'm working on. <laughs> okay. 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 Are you laughing at me? Mm -hmm. I'm laughing. I'm laughing about how I try to contain everything and make it. And you. <laughs> you. It is what it is. I know, Mom. I know. It's okay. Go ahead. All right. So I'm going to show this quickly because I'm only supposed to do sneak peeks. It's a test knit that I'm doing. Who's it for? It's for Caitlin Hunter. But what I really wanted to show you is I, I asked Heather to do me some new colors. And this is in a new base that will be coming out this spring. She calls it Pearl Sock. I do call it Pearl Sock. Because it has a, a shine like the... So it's, it's two greens. It's 100% merino. That I really like. Four play. Yeah, it's a really tight twist. Really tight twist. And then I wanted, in my head I wanted a lavender. This is a little rosier than a lavender, but it, it works really well. And in my head I wanted a purple. And this is kind of a variegated purple, but it's got some of the green in it. And I'm really pleased with it, just so you know. I haven't named them, I haven't really dyed them, dyed them up anything except for um, what mom's using for her project. So, so that'll be coming soon. I will say, mm -hmm. you say I'm a slow knitter, but if it's color work, it seems like it flies. Yeah, we were going to podcast yesterday and she said, was podcast Tuesday? I want to work on my sweater. <laughs> so I got And that's when I thought I would get my shawl done. <laughs> so I, I got a lot. That's yesterday. So, but I really like it. So that'll be fun and interesting to see how that, that progresses. Yep. I really like it. I'm excited about the pattern. Um, it's going to be fun. Uh, let's talk about what you want to do if you weren't doing that. And you weren't designing something. Oh. Yeah. I would like to do... This is uh, a pattern um, by Tracy of the Grocery Girls. What's the name of the pattern? The name of the pattern is Canmore Cow. It's mosaic color work. She's got fringe on it. And this was part of the December designers. Every day in December, a designer did a pattern. And it was it a free pattern? No. No? It's not a free pattern? No, it's okay. not a free pattern. It's not a free pattern. So it's mosaic, um, ribbing, plain, mosaic, nice. Change up a little bit. Mm -hmm. um, using fingering and either mohair or surrey alpaca. So Max the Knitter did it. Max the Knitter. Now, did she use Surrey Alpaca when she did it? Mm -hmm. She did. Okay. Yeah. I thought that might have been a design element that he changed or something of hers. No. No. She did as well. Okay. Um, what he changed was no fringe. No fringe. Made it more masculine. It did. Mm -hmm. It did. 
So I picked colors today, not that I've got time to do it, but. I wanna do it, but. So this is Olan Guilt Trip, along with Olan Surrey Alpaca. That's and her this, cloudy face. Her cloudy, yeah. Um, and this is Ghost Rider, which is one of my favorite. I would do. You would hold those together. I would hold these together as my main color. And then my mosaic would be in the navy. So this, the cloudy will lighten this up a good bit. Mm -hmm. And then the mosaic. Now, is the mosaic held double or anything? Or no. is it just, so how does it, how does it work up that the weights aren't too different? Well, the weights are kind of different, but it just makes the slip stitches a little smaller with the navy. Okay. So it's a little less obtrusive. Okay. So that's another small project. That is another small project. <laughs> that's another one. And a lot of combinations. Max the Knitter used gray and um, black. Right. I was going to say it brown, was, but it wasn't. It was, no. It was, he used kind of a, a creamy gray. He did. It was a little, little warm kind of. Very nice, very striking. Um, Jerry is doing um, The Snuggle is Real, mm -hmm. and he is using- Jerry's one of our regulars. Wild Thing, one of your new mm -hmm. colors, and Ruby Ruby, and it's also very subtle, mm -hmm. it's, but very masculine looking, and it looks really nice. So, okay. You ready to talk about your- your cowl? So, we got Ta -da! my pattern up today <laughs> with a little glitches. Um, there, it was little minor details that, you know, like I said, rookies, rookie mistakes. <laughs> <laughs> well, we fixed it. It, it. It's not one of those things that you can practice to do ahead of time <laughs> to figure it all out. Um, so I designed a cow for Heather, and she actually even let me name it Heather's cow. Well, there's a story there. She had a different name first. Well, why don't you tell the story about how you decided you wanted to do it? You guys. How I wanted to name it? No, not how you wanted to name it. What about how I needed a cow for my coat? So she had this coat, a new coat, and I said I needed to make her a cow for it. And she said, well, why don't you just design one? Because, you know, she's supposed to be designing. Right. Which is easier said than done around here. But I had a vision. And I wanted it to be big so that you could wear it inside as well as with mm -hmm. your coat. And soft. So, of course, that means mohair. Right. And... The color's a little off for it to be my coat, though to go with my coat because it should really be a little yellower, a, a little yellower. The coat is a, um, uh, a faux cheetah, cheetah. Right. And so, but you like the colors when you got started and I you just kept going with it. And, and I it's very, I mean, it's, it's very classic. It doesn't, it doesn't matter. I didn't want to wait for you to dye me something different. She didn't ask. <laughs> <laughs> so what I did here, this is, Dove. Here, you can hold it up and talk about it. Will you hold it up? This is Dove. This portion down here is Dove with Birmingham mohair. And then this middle portion has no mohair with it. And it is Earl Grey and the Dove. And I held the Dove so that the knit stitch is on top. So now, do your directions lighter. tell you that? Mm -hmm. It does. And then... And this is brioche, guys. This is just simple brioche. Simple brioche. Just two-color brioche. And you just, thought, you just do what she says in the pattern, right? That's all you do. <laughs> and don't put it down. <laughs> well, you know how it is with brioche. You got to keep it going. The other thing, too, is don't stop at the beginning of the round. If you're going to put it down, stop in the middle. So that way you know which yarn you're working with instead of if you stop 
at the beginning of the round, both yarns are there and it could be a little tricky. So I decided I was helping somebody do it last week and I decided that the best thing to do is if you stop in the middle of your round, then you know, then you know. And so then this portion is exactly like this portion, but it is the Earl Grey held with black mohair. And the, the it's amazing that it still looks navy. It just looks like a black navy, like a blue black. Yeah. Um, so you could do it in any two colors. And if you don't like it this big, you could do it smaller. Um, and you could do it shorter. You just change how many you cast on and how tall the panels are. Now, is this ribbing twisted rib or is it regular ribs? It's twisted rib. Okay. And what size needles did you use? I used a five. So this is a free pattern on Ravelry now. It is a free pattern yep. on Ravelry. Yep. It's called Heather's Cowl by the Knot House. So I told mom earlier that I thought this might be a little simple for what people thought she was gonna do because you know we made such a big deal about mom designing and we know how much she loves color work. Well, you gotta start somewhere. <laughs> and it's a little daunting. It is. Which part, the designing part or the writing the pattern part? <laughs> Both. <laughs> Both. But now that you've done the done the writing the pattern the part, it won't be it won't be quite as hard, right? Not as long as I've got Carissa to, <laughs> to critique it. To critique it. I write word wording because I mm -hmm. speak wording, and my pattern was wordy, <laughs> but we fixed that. Um, so you pulled some other colors. I told I her to did. pull some other colors that would make good options. So it, I I think this blue and brown would be gorgeous. Mm -hmm. And it doesn't have to be my yarn, guys. It can be any fingering yarn. Yeah, any fingering right? I yarn. I mean, it doesn't have to be not And it yarns. doesn't have to be two solids. Um, pull me your... Oh, you want the pink cat? Yeah. Pink cat's my masterpiece. So, Patricia is doing a test knit for me using pink cat. So, this is pink lady, pink cat mohair, and... Well, how's she doing the colors, though, Mom? Well, she's, she's holding these two together and she's holding these two together, which is how you So that would it. be the top, the way I'm wearing it. Those, those, this would be the top, the dark part. This would be, well, it doesn't it matter. It doesn't matter. You just, you get the mohair to match one of the colors. Okay. Well, this is why I wanted you to do it, to talk about it, because what's in your head is not. Right. So you get the mohair to match one of the colors. And then you hold the mohair with the one that it doesn't match. Right. Which, which is, gives, which gives, gives you, this you this effect set. down here. And then she is holding the pink lady. I think I have mohair in my eye. For her top stitch in the brioche. Holding this okay. one. So that that pink is gonna come out. Yes, yes. So that's an option. And then you said the brown and the blue would be pretty. Yes. And I... Holding either blue or brown mohair. It, you know, whichever one you wanted to be kind of dominant. And I think these two would be pretty too. It'd be kind of like this. Kind of look very similar actually. Um, depending on if you used a dark mohair or if you used a light mohair. If you used a light mohair then it would change the way this looks because this would be lighter. Right, that would be light. Mm -hmm. And then this would have These a similar colors. effect of what the bottom has. Yeah. So it's it's a really versatile. As long as your mohair kind of goes with, with one, of them. one of them, you can just go from your stash and pick out what you have and mm -hmm. sock yarn that you've picked up and and do it. So that's that. Thanks for all the love. I appreciate it. Yep. We, we uh, just got it live before we started uh, filming this morning. And um, I posted it on Ravelry. And she's she's gotten a bunch of likes and a bunch thank of support you. from everybody. So thank, thank you. you. <clears throat> so. I do appreciate, not that I didn't, but I do even more as well we all should. 
our designers. They work hard to give us what they give us. And sweater designers work even harder <laughs> because they have to have all the sizes. Right, all the grades, all the... And I know that there's programs and there's tech editors and there's lots to help, but I, I appreciate them. My appreciation has grown even You don't more. mind paying $8 for a pattern? I do not mind paying $8 for a pattern. Um, so I'm trying to think what else we need to talk about. Why don't we show the uh, giveaway? All right. So we, we mentioned we're at 4,000 subscribers. Thank you everybody that subscribes. If you subscribe, then you will be notified of our next podcast, which happens, well now it's happening every two to three weeks. Yeah. We're doing it a little bit more often than we did before. We are. So and we hope be, that can continue. Yeah, that, that you'll be notified of, of when we've got a new one. So up. if you're not, please do subscribe. There's a red button, subscribe button mm -hmm. when you watch it. So we have a new giveaway, two skeins of La Bien Me. And that, that's her singles? Her singles that I had stashed. Yeah, I think those... The name of them is what uh, Kensington. Uh huh. So that these are from Rhinebeck. Yes. Yeah. So those are pretty. Along with a Katrinkles bracelet with stitch markers. Stitch markers, yeah. So you have to be subscribed. You have to leave us a comment. And we today is the eleventh. Um, let's give it two weeks. Well, would you rather not give it that long? No, I'd rather give it a little bit longer. I'd rather you just like pick a day, like the March last 1st. day, like the okay March first. Because I don't know that I'm going to get this up today, and then you know, okay, like, March first, and then we'll just do a random. Selection. We'll do a random. Um, I will contact you, and then you have to contact me and give me all your information. So hopefully we'll podcast again before March 1st, huh? Maybe. Well, today's the 11th. Yeah. All right. Maybe. All right. Or maybe we'll podcast right after March 1st. Maybe. Maybe. So I'm just trying to think if there's any... Oh, I want to show you guys a couple of colors. So um, new colors that I've been dying. Um, so this is... This is Pink Cat. And I'm trying to see... So first, I guess the whole thing started with Daydreamer, which was this, is this really kind of loud, light lavender color. It looks a little more purple in the screen than what it really is. It's a little grayer, I think. So it all started with this color. Um, and I don't know why, I just kind of had this color in my head about a different lavender. And then I came up with um, Kaleidoscope, Kaleidoscope and I came up with Kaleidoscope the night before uh, we left to go to Vogue. This is Kaleidoscope and I'm actually doing a sweater in Kaleidoscope DK. It's um, Casa Pica's speckle sweater. Um, I don't think I have it here to show you, but I'll, maybe I'll have it next time. So this is Kaleidoscope. So I, I did some navy and pink with it. And then um, I wish I had your phone. But um, I was looking at, you know, I look at fashion things on Instagram and, um, you know, Vogue kind of um, catwalk kind of runway things. And, <laughs> and this picture pops up and it was, she was wearing a coat, right? It was mm -hmm. a coat and it was pink. At, at, well, this looks just like it, except this brown part was the fur around the neck of the coat. And it had this same undertone of daydreamer this this really light lavender in it and the hot pink oh i you know what mom i need the little swatches so we can show how it knit up i think they're in the they're maybe in the back okay so anyway so i did it and i was really happy with myself very pleased with myself for doing it um being able to get it the way I did, and uh, it is it is a labor intensive color, um, but I named it Pink Cat because it was clearly um, a faux, you know, um, kind of a leopard coat that she was wearing that was dyed pink and purple and brown. So 
So anyway, so this is Pink Cat, and this is how it knits up. Can you guys see that? I did this little swatch so you can see. So there's really no pooling. Uh, the brown um, and the really dark pink um, are, are pretty, pretty evenly sporadic in it. And I think, I think I'm gonna do a love note. Oh, that would be pretty. I think I'm gonna do a love note in it. And I'm not really even a pink person, um, but I really like this one. So because the pink was so great, I had to do solid, right? And so this is Pink Lady. And actually I was thinking about Casapinka uh, because you know, she loves her bright pink. And I don't really have a true bright pink, but I do now, it's Pink Lady. So those, those are new. And then we have Pink Cat and Mohair. It just glistens when you right. wind it. It is just. Right. It's, it's that purple. It's so, it's pretty. Um, I, d I don't want to say it's iridescent, but it it's almost kind of, is. It's kind of that way. So those are some new colors. And then, you know, I have a whole bunch of new colors. I don't want to spend too much time on it. Um, this is a new one that I really like too, Wild Thing. And this is a brown and black with just a little lighter taupey brown in it. This is the looks like I'm far away from the camera. This is uh, the little swatch that we did for it. So again, it's kind of the same. It's, it's not gonna pull. You're gonna have, um, it's mostly dark with just a little bit of light spots, or not spots, but um, light spots. Tones. Light tones in it. Let's go with light spots. <laughs> All right. Anyway. What about patches? There's little light no. <laughs> no. Well, there are lighter strands. Tones. <laughs> Tones. Oh, goodness, I'm turning red. Um, That's anyway. why she's not allowed in the yarn shop and she doesn't get to talk to customers. That's not true. <laughs> you can't listen to everything she says. Anyway, this is Wild Thing. Uh, what else? American Sky is new. It's a really, really light blue. That's what I was holding up with the yeah, brown. Yeah, that's what you were holding up with the brown. Oh, and then I held this up a minute ago too. This is um, Secret, which is a really pale uh, kind of cream, but it's a little pink to be cream. So that one's new. And Ghost is new, which is um, just a light gray. I guess that's about it. There might be a few others. Um, You've got one called Cotton that is a really pretty beige. Right, that's new. I hope I remember how to do that one. And yeah, so yeah, that's what's going on here at the Knot House. Trunk show, two weeks. Trunk show, two weeks, yeah. We're excited about that. Mm -hmm. And then, you know, before you know it, we'll be talking about the pop-up shop. We do have all those. Yep, everybody's lined up. You'll see that. You'll watch for us on Instagram. So on Instagram, we're the Knot House. On Ravelry, no, 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 I'm sorry. Take that back. On Instagram, we're Knot House Yarns. On Ravel Ravelry, we are the Knot House. And our um, website Knot House Yarns. Knot House Yarns. So. And on Facebook, we're the Knot House. The Knot House, right. So. Um, you can find us there. Um, like I said, I just mentioned the pop-up and we'll be posting about that pretty soon um, on Instagram. Got some new people, it's exciting. Mm -hmm. I've got no hair in my eye. So, All right. and I think we, that's it. We will address some of the other um, answers to- You, you mean know, the what, questions the that questions people said? The questions that people yeah. had. We'll continue to do that along yeah. on the- um, Yeah, it was kind of insightful to just, you know, what everybody see what people wanted several to talk people about. wanted to see the shop yep you want to talk about color and certain projects and things so yeah so thank you for watching thank you so much happy valentine's happy day happy valentine's day <laughs> we'll see you guys soon thanks bye, bye. Ta -da.